Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Tuesday, September the 24th, 2024. Today there is a trine aspect between Mercury and Uranus. Now, as far as I'm concerned, a trine is not a particularly major aspect. It's certainly not in the same league as a conjunction or an opposition or even a square. But still, I thought I would look at what it means to have Mercury trine Uranus and also what kind of events one might expect when Mercury is trining Uranus. So I thought I would consider this and I would look at some examples of Mercury trine Uranus people and Mercury trine Uranus events. So for example, Kamala Harris's running mate, Tim Waltz, he has Mercury trine Uranus, so it might be a good idea to look at uh, his chart, see how that M Mercury trine Uranus uh, might be working. And I'll be looking at other charts, both of people and of events later in the video. But first of all, I want to consider the astrology and the I Ching for today, which is Tuesday, September the 24th. 2024. Now just a reminder, if you enjoy this video I'd be very grateful if you were to like it and if you enjoy this video and you're not subscribed I would be extremely grateful if you were to subscribe and yeah if you want to buy me a coffee there is a link in the description. So okay so let's uh, look at what's happening today. There is um, Uranus, that white sphere is it's not the moon it is Uranus looks kind of quite beautiful and stark doesn't it and there is a symbol for Mercury trine Uranus so here is the positions of the planets um, for today Tuesday set for noon New York and we can see that the moon is in Cancer so the moon moves into Cancer well London time in Europe so well, certainly UK, it moves into Cancer at 10 to 4 in the afternoon. But uh, if it's uh, if you're in the Americas, it will move into it will move into Cancer over over the morning. So Moon moving into Cancer, it's it's kind of nice really. Moon works very well in Cancer. Moon rules Cancer, and it's a bit of a difference from the Moon being in Gemini. Moon being in Gemini is more of a sort of communicative sign communicating through our sort of through our brain and uh, perhaps our words and written words spoken words we want to get our message across and it kind of lives a little bit in its head uh moon in moon in gemini moon in cancer by contrast is more emotional because cancer is a water sign and perhaps it's more cautious and i suppose at the moment there's a lot to be cautious about and so, yes, that does make a change. It means that there's now quite a few planets in water signs because we've just had Venus moving into Scorpio. We, of course, have Saturn in Pisces. We've got Mars in Cancer. Now we've got Moon in Cancer as well. And the Moon is now moving towards a conjunction with Mars. So tomorrow there will be that conjunction with the Moon and Mars. And But I think we'll perhaps be feeling that to some extent that conjunction between the moon and mars a certain uh, increased energy um, things starting to move and uh, we might feel um, a certain sense of of excitement maybe with moon conjunct mars and so that's uh that's the broad uh, planetary picture uh well at least that's a lunar picture Oh, well, of course, there is Mercury trine Uranus. I forgot about that. Now, I'm going to be talking about Mercury trine Uranus in some detail at the end of this video. But we can see that Mercury is at 26 Virgo and it's trine Uranus at 27 Taurus. So Mercury trine Uranus uh, provides a little bit of excitement. Uh, we might feel that things are starting to move. And from a mental perspective, we might uh, have ideas but, you know, it's Mercury in Virgo. Maybe we'll just notice things. We'll notice things that we hadn't noticed before. And that might be uh, quite, uh, quite inspiring. Though, 
you know, I know it's Mercury and we think about Mercury as in terms of ideas and what what people say and getting news. But I don't know. I think with Mercury trying Uranus, if you look at some of the events that happen when Mercury trines Uranus, some of them are quite, uh, quite dramatic. I mean, I suppose Mercury is the way things communicate, people communicate in general. It's about travel. It might be about planes, cars, boats, um, however people get get from one place to another. And with Mercury trying Uranus, it might sort of stir things up. Things might be quicker than usual, or there might be sudden events which delay travel, or I suppose in extreme situations there could be um, some kind of mishap. Um, so, uh, you know, we do need to be a little bit careful with Mercury trine Uranus, Mercury trine Uranus in Earth signs. So that physical, the physical world on which we sort of rely on may not be quite as stable as we had had assumed it was. But uh, also last quarter moon. Uh, so we've just we had the uh, full moon partial eclipse. And now we're running into the new moon. So the lunar cycle is slowly uh, coming to an end. I think the new moon is on, Oct- I'm right in saying it's October the 2nd. So that's coming up. And so October the 2nd, new moon coming up. So that uh, could be about some kind of change in the lunar cycle. Some ch- No, not well, it's the end of a lunar cycle, beginning of a, beginning of, um, a new cycle. And so... You know, we might feel with this last quarter moon that perhaps something has to be done. Uh, that if it's not done now, well, we perhaps missed our chance. And uh, in, as the moon moves towards the, the, ne- the next new moon, as it goes into this deep waning stage, then perhaps we should uh, take stock of what's going on rather than actually feel that we have to initiate anything new. Now, notice that the moon is at zero degrees Cancer at noon set for set for New York. Now, if you set that chart for Sydney, the moon is at 22 Gemini. So it's a, it's a different chart, kind of. In, in, if you're in Sydney, if you're in Australia, New Zealand, East Asia, the moon is not going to go into Cancer today. Uh, it's still very much a moon in Gemini day. And... Perhaps it's going to be a little bit easier. Um, perhaps not so complicated. Um, the moon really has... It's made its last aspect... Well, no, it's not. It's, the moon is actually making a square to Mercury and making a square to Neptune. So Mercury, Neptune... I suppose if so, if you are if in Australia, New Zealand, East Asia, Moon making that square for to Mercury and Neptune, it could be a lot to say, but some of the things being said might not uh, make sense, or there's certainly a lot of possibilities for confusion. So perhaps uh, it might be a case of the less said, um, the better. So that's that's a picture in Sydney and in, in Australia, New Zealand, East Asia. So you see, it's slightly different, and this is the, the problem I have doing these daily horoscopes. You know, when I do have to consider what the moon is doing, and I also have to consider time zones and the time. The difference between New York and um, Sydney is massive, and it's basically a, a different day. But I have to try somehow to bring it all together. So let's uh, now look at the heliocentric picture um, so here is uh, here are things from a heliocentric viewpoint and so we can see that sort of mercury this is remember this is from the perspective of the sun being at the center of the solar system you can see that mercury is opposition saturn and i mean it's not there yet and it's a little bit of a way away, but a few days, couple of days time, Mercury will be opposition Saturn heliocentrically. So already we're starting to feel that a little bit. And there may be a certain sense that 
we have to start to take things a little more uh, seriously perhaps i mean that is is really is is a possibility and mercury is making a square to venus i think that square to venus in general is is quite nice i i, I mean it can be nice it's about how we express ourselves in a maybe in a creative sense how we explain to people who we are and what we can do and you know what sort of special abilities that we actually actually have and so i think we can perhaps talk quite freely about them and people need to know about us and it, it may be a little bit difficult at first explaining what we can do but i think if we do make the effort i think we'll be suitably rewarded but you know, overall, heliocentrically, I, I would not have said that there is a huge amount um, going on. So let's now look at things from a perspective of the 12 signs. So these are my forecasts for the 12 signs for today, which is Tuesday, September the 24th, 2024. And that is the wrong chart because I want to see the I want to see zero degrees Aries on the left so let me just uh, let me just fix that uh, sorry about this uh, let's get the zero degrees Aries on the left as it should be there you go okay so these are my forecasts for the 12 signs for today which is Tuesday September the 24th 2024 Aries Aries Things are starting to change a bit. You know, the moon has been in Gemini. I mean, indeed, it might be in Gemini all day long if you're in Asia, Australia, New Zealand. And of course, with the moon in Gemini, there was a lot of con a lot of emphasis on um, communication and what you had to say for yourself, especially if you were, you know, especially if if you were a, an Aries. But you know, the moon moving into moving into cancer you'll certainly be feeling this if you're in the americas it's sort of late afternoon this evening if you're um in um uh in europe and well europe and the middle east africa and so with the moon moving into cancer there is a feeling that things are grounding a little things are perhaps not not quite so um, um, up in the air and that you you feel really that you want some kind of stability and you know Mars is already in cancer you know, that Mars is you and you want things to be straightforward and down to earth and that's uh, that's you know that's very much how you feel and I think Aries today, you can be a little bit defensive. And, and I think as the day progresses, you will become increasingly more defensive if anyone um, gets in your way or tries to do things in a way that you're not comfortable with or oversteps boundaries. I think you'll be, you will be quick, I think, to defend yourself. But I don't think that this defensiveness need to dominate the day. I think in terms of you know how you are looking at what's happening around you, I, I think that you you take an approach that is uh, fairly optimistic, and you take the view that things around you are maybe not perfect, but they certainly could be better and can be better. And if you're with the right people, I think that you're able to generate a high level of enthusiasm that sort of borders on some serious optimism here but it's just important that you do keep that distance just keep a little bit of distance because if you get too close to anyone that could that could spoil the day so see what you can do to make things better and indeed through the things you say it can make things better and I think you have the capacity not just to ground yourself but also to ground other people and I think that you all, your mind is pretty good and 
you're quite quickly able to actually sort of get to the bottom of things and to really understand you know what what actually matters and so that's that's something that uh, you are going to be be very good at but I think in terms of excitement I think you want excitement perhaps to be quite theoretical I don't think that you actually want real excitement I think in many respects you would prefer to talk about excitement rather than to actually just uh, live it out I don't think that's I don't think that's really something that you're going to want to do Taurus Taurus, uh, there is a trine aspect between Mercury and Uranus. Uh, and I think that this trine could actually be quite exciting because, you know, Uranus is in your sign. Um, Mercury is in Virgo. And uh, so with this, with this trine between Mercury and Uranus, you're going to... Uh, feel that things can happen there will be a sense of excitement because you know uranus in your sign aspecting mercury and you'll be you'll be you know thinking about all the things that uh, might be possible and so taurus you're not really going to want to limit yourself and i think that perhaps you're going to be a little more adventurous than usual especially towards the end of the day especially if you're in the americas you know i think that if you're in europe or africa or the middle east it might might take a little bit of time a little bit of time to uh, warm up if you're in australia and new zealand then there might be other things that you think you feel that you have to get away get out of the way first so it's it's a slower picture and a lot of the excitement I've been talking about, if you're in Australia or New Zealand, may need maybe more about maybe more about tomorrow. But that doesn't take away from the fact that there is this Mercury trine Uranus, which does affect um, everyone wherever you are in the world. So I think uh, you do have to consider, you know, what is possible and that mercury trine uranus it is actually moving towards a grand trine you know we had a grand trine involving the sun we're, we're now over the next couple of days we've got mercury trine uranus mercury trine pluto so taurus you know wherever you are it's uh, it is a time to be imaginative and also to just consider you know what actually might be possible because in actual fact many things are possible if you just um you just give things a chance and it's just very important taurus at the same time not to not to doubt yourself uh, because uh you can make things happen and i think that you're going to be helped by certain other people because there are people around you who are enthusiastic and they are optimistic and you know they are open to new ideas so do do take advantage of your social environment as well so you know overall you know there is a lot going on and i i think the next couple of days can actually be be quite exciting gemini gemini mercury is of course your ruler and Mercury is currently making a trine aspect to uranus which is um, the planet of earthquakes and surprises and perhaps uh, things happening that you weren't expecting now that might sound a bit bad but the mercury is trine uranus it's not square uranus or opposition uranus so with that mercury trine uranus you you may feel that you can make an impact so if you're not comfortable with the way things are if you're looking at the foundation of things and you're looking at the foundation of things and you're wanting things to change and you're wanting things to be better then um, that indeed can happen and it's it's something you can you can make happen and so uh so I would have said uh, you're in, in many respects, 
quite a good position and so you don't have to take things as they are you know Gemini's as a sign you know they can sometimes get a bit bored you know they might be thinking you know the same old same old you know things happen the same way there's no change no variety and I think that the danger perhaps is to think that change and variety can come from outside when in fact change and, and variety can actually come from within it can come from within yourself and uh, you have to perhaps consider your own responsibility for the world in which you live and if there's something you don't like about the world in which you live um, then yes you can do something to change its nature and Mercury trine Uranus is very much a reminder of this and Mercury is not just trine Uranus it's actually moving towards a trine of Pluto and over the next couple of days we have this grand trine involving Mercury in Virgo Uranus in Taurus uh, Pluto in um, Pluto in Capricorn now this is a grand trine in earth signs and you know sometimes Gemini's can be a bit dissociated from the material world it's it's just something out there that you're not totally comfortable with and you might sort of think that sometimes that you you can imagine all you like you can think all you like but you can't change the inevitability of the material world around you and that can make you feel a bit down it can it can make you feel that uh, there's really nothing that can be done uh, it's just part of what life is all about but I think with this grand trine in earth signs with mercury being involved in this grand trine I think that you're very much in a position where you can have an impact and if you don't like the way something looks you can you can change it and it's just it's just a simple question of being able to express yourself and and also having a fundamental belief in yourself you know that sometimes Gemini's can not have uh, too much belief in themselves because they overthink the matter but if you don't overthink overthink the matter and you're able to just go to the very foundation of things and that's all where you have to where you have to go for if you want to change the material world don't focus on the details you, you have to kind of trace everything back trace everything back to their roots and if you go to the roots then and you work at that level at the deep level then pretty much anything can be changed cancer so cancer you know there is a lot of focus on the moon when I look at uh, the Cancerian horoscope and it it might feel like there's an over focus but I mean I suppose that is the issue with cancer that the fact that the ruler of cancer is so fast moving so in some respects of all the 12 signs the sign which is actually the most difficult to talk about is uh, is is yours because the moon rules so sorry the moon moves so quickly and you know if you're looking at this, this reading at the beginning you know I was talking about what was going on in Sydney Australia and what was going on in New York and the moon was in really very different positions so you know to an extent uh, cancer if you are in East Asia Australia New Zealand then you know it's a moon in Gemini day uh, it's a, a day when um, you perhaps feel that you're not quite ready you know there's there are things you'd like to do that, that, that you're almost ready but not quite and so you may feel that it's perhaps best to just wait a bit and to take things in but not to reach finite conclusions that would be a bad idea because the moon is making a square to mercury making a square to uh, a square to neptune moon on the mercury neptune midpoint yeah lots of things going on lots of things to pick up lots of ideas but uh, is it right it's, it's quite easy to reach the wrong conclusions now if you're in the americas for example the moon is pretty much in cancer all day long so it's a, it's a very different kind of energy it's it's 
It's a day when you do feel more sure of yourself and you're more sort of ready to make things happen, to take the initiative and, you know, to be seen and heard. And whatever's going on, you just feel a greater sense of, of comfort. And of course, if you're in Europe, you're sort of, you're halfway between the two. In Europe, first half of the day, moon in, moon in Gemini, perhaps more feeling you want to um, watch rather than commit. Uh, but then as the afternoon progresses, you feel that you're able to, to understand what's going on. As the moon moves into Cancer, you start to get into your stride. So there is a, a, bit, of a bit of a changeover there if you're, in, if you're in Europe. But the overall trend is favourable wherever you are with the moon moving into Cancer. And the moon, as it moves into Cancer, it starts making a conjunction to Mars. And I think you know, that conjunction is going to be quite energizing over the next day or two. Well, next day, I suppose. Um, so not day or two, so today and tomorrow. There is a blast of energy, which I'm, I'm hoping that you'll be able to take advantage of. And cancer, it's also the case that your imagination is good on, is, is on good form and so is your mind. And you know, there's lots of uh, information that you're able to pick up and you're understanding, um, you're understanding things in a new way. And I think it's a time when you can really transmit this knowledge and you get something. It's t- taking, t- taking you a long time to get, taking a long time to understand, but it, finally it's starting to make sense. And over the next few days... Uh, you're able to, yeah, tell people about it and start to bring other people into your world. And it's it's a kind of a one-way flow, though. I think it's you're the one with the ideas. I don't think you have to necessarily worry too much about other people's ideas. I mean, you can listen to what people have to say, listen to what people are thinking and feeling, but, you know, don't underestimate your own thoughts and feelings because you you are reaching some I think very important conclusions Leo Leo I suppose you're enjoying the fact that the sun is now in Libra and I suppose with the sun in Libra things just uh, feel uh, feel better it feels that uh, things are starting to move and so you you can enjoy that that's that's true and it's also the case though that you don't want to get sidetracked i think that yeah i think there is some danger that you know you might with sun in libra be moving from one place to another place and you don't want to get too seriously committed but you know you stay in one place you have to move on and you 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 never sort of really put down roots and so there might be a certain lack of depth here if you're not careful if you just go with the flow you might find that you're never really applying to anything never really achieving very much on the other hand i think it if you try to tune into your sensitivity over the course of the day and try to feel things through rather than think things through. I do think that you're likely to be sort of more successful. You know, you you can take some time off uh, and you can sort of try perhaps to tune into whatever's going on around you because I think there are some things going on around you but you don't immediately understand but you kind of know that you do need to understand what's what's happening. And so, Leo, um, don't be in too much of a hurry and uh, don't feel that you have to solve everything at once. Now, as far as uh, money is concerned and material stuff, there is a trine between Mer- Mercury and Uranus and you know, Mercury is in Virgo which is a very materially orientated 
uh, sign. Uranus is in Taurus, and so with Uranus in Taurus, you know, it is a time when you're thinking about where you want to go. And it's not just money, it's about your direction. And I suppose you want to feel that you're moving in the right direction and in the process your f finances are keeping up. And you might have ideas about making money. It's actually a good time for Mercury trying Uranus of having business ideas or for having finding just thinking about new ways of making money. But because Mercury is in Virgo, it's very sensible and it's very grounded. So I don't think you're going to come up with stupid ideas. You're just going to just realize that you, you start to get things. And Mercury is also making a trine to Pluto. And that over the next couple of days, that tr day or two, Mercury will be making the exact trine to Pluto. So we've got this grand trine in Earth signs, which I think, Leo, if you take advantage of it, you're being given opportunities to see how things could be better, how you could uh, improve your uh, material environment. And you, there are definitely uh, things that you... Uh, you can do. Virgo. Virgo, uh, as you know, Mercury continues to be in Virgo. It's not going to stay in Virgo for much longer. Uh, in a couple of days time, Mercury does move into Libra. But while Mercury is in Virgo, it's, it's doing some interesting things. It's currently making a trine to Uranus and it's making a trine to Pluto. And that that trine that what's grand trine in earth is is going to be great because you know you you as you know you as a virgo you're an earth sign and you've got with an earth grand trine you're just very sensitive to it and it may work on different levels it if, if you like it can work out on a fairly basic gross level when i say gross I, d I don't mean gross in a necessarily in a in a negative sense but gross as in just the basic material details money career organization the kind of things that we have to deal with but of course it's it's only temporary isn't it i mean we're all going to die at some stage. Uh, it's all vanity, but still it's it, it does matter in the short term. And so from a financial and organizational perspective, there's certainly a lot you can do and you can get things moving very quickly. And you're going to be a very good organizer and a very good manager, I think, with this um, with this grand trine. And you're just going to notice things really quickly. Notice things about money, things about things where things aren't properly organized. You'll just see it all. And I think you're going to be able to cover a lot of ground very quickly. And if anyone's holding you back, I think you're, you're not going to take kindly to that. And you're going to you know, be tempted to kind of overthrow things. I mean, that is definitely a possibility. Now, the Grand Trine in Earth works on many levels. Of course, at the highest level, we're talking about the Earth uh, I suppose, as a living entity, we've got to, um, you know, really uh, concentrate on who we are and where we fit in, and being close to the earth and you know, plants, uh, life, uh, flora and fauna around us. It, there could be just with that grand trine in earth. Um, a sense of who you are and where you're supposed to be going. And when we look at the earth at that highest level, it's only then that we sort of get a sense of permanence. Because if we're only focused on ourselves, then of course, and, and money and things like that, then it's, it's all very temporary, isn't it? And, and it can be taken away from us in an instant. But on a sort of a wider level, that's that's something that Virgos do need to concentrate on. I suppose that's a challenge for Virgos, isn't it? Um, looking beyond things and seeing how completely trivial at one sen in one sense the material world is, but the living world is, is perhaps everything and we just need to be, we need to be part of something larger than ourselves. And I suppose once we, once we 
become part of larger something larger than ourselves we have some uh, some sense of um, our own immortality so that could be a way that the grand trine in earth can actually be used and it seems that by getting down to basics and you know you know like i suppose i think it was gurdjieff who who told his disciples to pick potatoes or something like that by picking potatoes you 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 discover your purpose and your spirituality and and so forth um and that might be uh might be the best approach so i think it it's a day which i think can be um extremely um it can can be very meaningful and can help you sort of propel yourself to the next stage oh, by the way i just i'd forgotten to click virgo to click virgo so that it's on the immediate left so i'm just doing it just as i'm finishing off with virgo i just noticed i'd i'd forgotten to click it through so uh my apologies for that but uh there is a lot going on and it's it's your mind and your awareness that matters and just understanding perhaps that you're part of a wider material whole libra libra you may feel that it's time to just do something just something has to be done and i think it may be connected with the fact that we've just had the autumnal equinox autumnal if you're in the northern hemisphere and you know with the autumnal equinox you know the sun that means the sun is moving into libra uh, i mean we you already had the moon in libra for a couple of days and perhaps you're starting to think about it think about what it means what its implications are and it is a time for you to start moving and perhaps to start committing and perhaps recently over the last couple of days there's been a lot of thinking and a lot of contemplation and wondering whether this course of action is right or maybe it's that course of action and you're not too sure you haven't been too sure and you may have been dithering a little but now i think it is becoming clear and i think if you're honest with yourself libra you will recognize that it's now time to sort of get moving i mean it's it's already tuesday the week has started and i think that uh, if you if you start actually making things happen and not uh, worrying too much about other people and their needs then i think that you will start to really get into your stride so you know don't leave it uh, any longer perhaps and you know it's also you know it is the last quarter of the lunar cycle you know the lunar cycle is you know is nearly finished you know new moon i think the new moon is on is it october the 2nd beginning of october we've got uh what's that we've got about another week before the new moon and so while the old this old lunar cycle is going there's still work to be done and particularly at this last quarter stage there may be a certain sense i think of urgency that uh, you know if you don't do it now you ever going to be able to get it done so that's something that you very much uh, do need do need to consider and aside from that you you perhaps need to accept over the next day or two that if you want something to happen you are perhaps going to have to risk causing offense you know someone might not be happy with the way you want to do things but you know you can't worry too much about other people's feelings and other other people's sensibilities because you know if you do well you'd get you'd sort of get nothing done so uh i think that you, you in that sense i think it's important that you are you are strong and also consider who is helping you and who is not helping you and perhaps at some level some changes are required you know you need to consider who is on your level who shares your vision who doesn't share your vision and in that way you can um 
you can start to decide where you need to be and who your true friends are and so that I think is is actually the the best approach but don't feel that you have to be completely out there in the world there is always room for introspection and you know mercury is about to move into libra in a couple of days time mercury will move into your sign but in those last few days before the sign change it might be a time when when you can pick up some useful things some useful information things that perhaps you maybe hadn't realized before and you can do it maybe in sort of quite a quiet and secretive way. You don't have to draw attention to yourself. So it's like there's two sides to you. There's a side to you that is outward going and forceful. And I hope you I hope you can find it in you to be forceful. There's also another side to you that is looking at things in a different way and is being a little more retiring or at least appears to be more retiring, but is actually gathering information and and is thinking things through and in the process is maybe coming to some very important discoveries. Scorpio. Scorpio, you are very much needed, I think, at the moment. I think that Scorpio, people are going to appreciate you and, you know, they're going to appreciate your view of the world and I think that your view of the world actually is quite optimistic and I said this when I was talking about Monday on and I, when I was talking about your, your sign from the perspective of Monday I, I said that you did have quite a a positive view I mean you might not have been very open or honest about your positivity but it was still there deep down and that positivity is very much with you. And as soon as someone scratches the hard Scorpio surface, uh, they will see, you know, who you are and what you can give. And I think that you can give a lot. And I think that, you know, if someone's miserable, if someone's got problems, I think in some respects you can you can cheer them up very quickly. I know sorry, cheer them up sounds a bit... Uh, a bit trivial. I don't mean cheer them up. That, that's that's not really a Scorpio word, cheering people up. It just sounds, uh, yeah, too trivial. Perhaps a better way of saying it is sort of giving people hope, giving people possibilities. And things are made better by the fact that Venus is now gathering strength in Scorpio. I say gathering strength. I, I mean, okay, all things being equal, Venus doesn't work very well in Scorpio because it's in its detriment. But you are a Scorpio. And so I think we can talk about Venus gathering strength in Scorpio, especially as Venus is starting to move towards a trine of Mars. And I think that that Venus trine Mars is um, giving you a boost. And I think that you, you're able to um, you know, really benefit from that Venus trine Mars. And so... Uh, you can um you can actually use it and so uh so scorpio uh you you are able to actually energize people at the moment and this ability to energize people is just going to get stronger between now and i don't know october the 6th and 7th when that venus trine mars becomes exact and we shouldn't forget that venus is ruler of Taurus which is your opposite sign and so that Venus trine Mars is likely to have some impact on relationships and it may just feel that you and someone else are slowly slowly starting to get closer to each other and you can perhaps feel an increasing empathy between um, yourself and another person though it may be someone that you don't really know very well, or it may be someone you don't even know at all. And, you know, there is today a trine aspect between Mercury and Uranus. And for Scorpios, that trine aspect between Mercury and Uranus is actually very sociable. It does allow you to um, 
meet new people, um, perhaps you know expand your social horizons and start to understand people in a new way. And Mercury trying Uranus can be quite inspiring and you can be ins you can be inspired by some of the people you meet and that means that if there are social opportunities over the next couple of days I, I would suggest that you take advantage of them you probably might feel that it's all a waste of time uh, you know that's Scorpio <laughs> being quite uh, skeptical about the value of mindless social interaction but if you look at the the fact that we do have this grand trine in earth signs mercury trine uranus mercury trine pluto and that grand trine in earth signs from a scorpio perspective is very sociable it's all about social energy and so in a group you are going to be very effective perhaps uh, more effective than you realize Sagittarius. So over the last couple of days I've been maybe uh, a little uh, a little negative about Sagittarius. I think that might have been the impression I've been giving um, or even a little bit vague uh, about what's what's happening in Sagittarius's life. But I don't think there's any real reason to be vague. You know, especially today when Mercury is making a trine to Uranus. I think that that Mercury trine Uranus today, Sagittarius, um, could actually really be useful. It can, it could really, really help you. So um, let's let's consider what that Mercury trine Uranus um, might might actually be about. So in the Sagittarius in the Sagittarian chart. Mercury is an important planet. It, it doesn't just rule relationships, other people. It also rules your whole direction in life uh, because, you know, Mercury rules Virgo and Virgo is a high profile direction orientated sign from a Sagittarian perspective. And so with Mercury making a trine to Uranus, that would indicate that you have a very clear sense of what you want and I think you also have quite a clear sense of who can help you and there are certainly people out there who can help you get what you want but even if these people aren't available it doesn't matter because with Mercury trying Uranus and actually Mercury trying Pluto as well you have the capacity I think to break free with or without other people's approval other people's approval is it's kind of an optional extra if you get other people's approval that would be great if you get people's support and praise that would also be great but i don't think that it is absolutely necessary far from it so you know do do consider where you're going and also it's just possible that some of the routines and structures you've set up for yourself recently, um, when I say recently, and actually, you know, when I'm talking about perhaps over the last few years, may have reached a stage where they need to be changed. And, you know, if you don't change things, okay, it's not the end of the world, but you might actually be holding yourself up. So, being able to look at the nature of things and look at the nature of the, of your life and the pattern of your life and you know things as simple as what time you go to get up what time you go to bed what time you eat uh, all this kind of thing is important and it's kind of relates to um relates to you and uh it uh, it does help you uh, to um helps you to understand yeah what might actually be be holding you holding you up and at the same time Sagittarius you know with the moon moving into cancer you are able to ask yourself some very deep questions um, you know sometimes you don't you kind of ignore these deep questions because uh, you've got better things to do but at the moment you you can actually start to feel things and and see things uh, 
that perhaps you aren't normally in touch with and that might sort of inform you about how you want to sort of const construct your ambitions for the future it's it's not just about the surface it's about things happening sort of deep down as uh, you what for example what are you capable of emotionally so if you're planning something and if you're planning a big venture it's not just about the external details it's a, it's about imagining you doing it in the real world and being under perhaps social and mental stress as soon as you stick your neck out as start, start as soon as you start attracting people's attention yeah that that can get criticism and it can br also bring um emotional pressure and i think at the moment you're going to be able to have a good understanding of what your where your limits are and you know what once you understand your limits i think that you can sort of proceed in a way that is i think uh, more confident and has has the greatest chance of success capricorn capricorn I was just talking about a grand trine in Earth just a couple of days ago. I was talking about the Sun being trine Uranus and trine Pluto. Well, we have another grand trine in Earth forming because we've got Mercury moving into the uh, last degrees of Virgo, getting ready to change sign. And Mercury is trine Uranus and it's trine Pluto. And so that's really creating... Um, it's it's creating a lot of energy and a lot of power and i think capricorn that is something that you are very much going to be able to tune into so i believe it's a day when you are realistic but also inspired and that's a nice place to be you know inspiration on its own goes nowhere uh, realism on its own so what it just it, it it can be just stultifying too much realism. But when you've got realism and inspiration walking hand in hand, then that is the perfect balance. And that's the kind of balance that you are now able to able to create. And so think about what you would like, what think about what you would like to happen. And with that Mercury trine Uranus, remember Mercury is in Virgo, Uranus is in Taurus in Earth signs, and Mercury is also trining Pluto, which is in Capricorn, it's in your sign. And so uh, you can start to imagine things and you can imagine, you know, what things could be like and not just could be like, I mean, can be like, will be like, because I think at the moment your power of sort of your willpower is, is strong. And I think also you have a fundamental sense of optimism here because actually things are moving quite quickly. And I think in many cases they're moving in your favor. Now, as far as relationships are concerned, it is worth noting that the moon is moving into cancer, your opposite sign. Now, that sign change might take place tomorrow if you're in Australia or New Zealand, but one way or another, the moon is moving into Cancer. It moves When it moves into Cancer, it's, but when the moon moves into Cancer, it makes a trine to Venus and it makes a, eventually makes a conjunction to Mars. So with the moon starting to, moving into Cancer, making a trine to Venus, I think, I think that's quite nice because... You know, you've got two planets in water signs, Moon in Cancer, Venus in Scorpio. Venus is, of course, the planet of relationships. And so that perhaps can highlight a softer side to your personality. I think that you're going to be very good at relating to people and relating to people not in some kind of vague, easy way, easygoing sense. Relating to people can mean understanding what someone is like. It can mean understanding the the unpleasant side of someone as some as well as someone's pleasant side so you can understand you can understand people uh in a very broad sense you can understand their good points you can understand their bad points and i think with that moon trine venus you may be able to make a decision about the extent to which you can 
trust someone because you will understand them and that's that's really really what matters and you know i'm not just talking about vague relationships it might be about career business the people you have to deal with at work if you if you've got your own business and you need to trust people who can you trust and and i think that moon trine venus may enable you to to make decisions about which people you can bring into your life and uh, which people should be avoided aquarius aquarius you feel the influence i think of mercury trine uranus so when i talk to when i talk about aquarius and uranus i have to be a bit careful here because um, as far as i'm concerned the ruler of aquarius is saturn i mean i don't believe that uranus rules aquarius as far as i'm concerned uranus is a discovered planet its rulership has no part in the traditional scheme and so that's it having said that i do understand that europe the planet uranus may perhaps have a certain sympathy with the sign uranus and so with mercury making a making making a trine to uranus i think that this uh this could be something that's that, that's quite useful that you're actually able to pick up on um you know as a as an aquarius you are someone who really is quite inspired in your own way uh, it's it's not a vague inspiration it's it's just something very personal very meaningful and you just understand what makes you different and perhaps you understand what you're supposed to do uh, on this planet even but with this mercury trine uranus you're starting to get an idea about the way you'd like things to be and you can see that certain things are certainly uh, certain things are complicated but you're able to look beyond the complications and you're able to see the opportunity with this mercury trine uranus and so some aquarians may become aware of a particular challenge or a task that may not be easy but it's at the same time very exciting and is a fundamental expression of your individuality and so you may actually be ready for the challenge with mercury trine uranus and you know and also you know you you have a good sense of what makes you special of your individuality today and to make things even better you seem to be getting quite responsible you you understand that individuality and inspiration just on their own are of limited value that at some stage you do have to put in the work for sure and that i think is something you can do and you can um make i think um good progress in preparing yourself and i think that perhaps is important you're preparing yourself for something you understand that you're not ready quite to move from perhaps one stage to the next and so preparation clearing things out making sure that you know you're not overwhelmed by random garbage by disorganization you're that's not what you're into you you want things to be very clear very straightforward and once you've done that once you once you're living in an environment where everything is as you want it to be then it's going to be even easier to start to tune into you know that mercury trine uranus that that inspiration uh, that being able to see possibilities even if the task in front of you is is hard work is going to take a lot of effort could be exhausting you, you can see beyond that and i think you can very much see the opportunity and uh, you know just a reminder also that the moon is making a trine to venus and moon trine venus 
yeah, in a general sense, you could say Moon, Vine, Moon Trine Venus is about relationships. And, and I think actually your ability to get on with people is, is going to be relatively good today. But it's it's also about perhaps uh, being able to change things and change appearances. It's sometimes appearances are important. And if you're trying to get support for something, then the way it's presented is going to really matter today. Or at the very least, you're going to be able to change the presentation so that the presentation is absolutely as good as it can be. And uh, that is going to just increase your chances of getting approval. I mean, if approval is something that is important to you today, I think you'll know what what is required to get it. Pisces. Pisces, it's kind of nice that we're getting more and more stuff in water signs. You know, Pisces is a water sign, of course. And, you know, we've got the moon moving into Cancer. OK, the moon might move into Cancer tomorrow if you're in Australia or New Zealand, but it's... Uh, it's it's going to get there in the end. And so with the moon moving into Cancer, we've got Mars in Cancer, we've got Venus in Scorpio, we've got Saturn in Pisces. It, it really does uh, make things kind of work well. And it's a time where I think Pisces, in many respects, you do feel that you are in your element and that you are uh, in a position where you you understand what is what is happening and you, and you can sort of feel what is happening uh, it, it, you just get a sense of it all and that uh, that makes that does make things much easier for you and you can um, you can read people's minds i mean i don't necessarily mean that in a completely psychic telepathic way but uh, I think people are giving enough signals, whether it's their body language, what they're saying, what they're not saying, uh, whatever it is, the nervous fidgeting, you can read it all. And uh, I don't think in a social sense that there's going to be any surprises there at all. But it's not just about other people, it is about you. And the moon is with the moon moving into Cancer, it, it does make you not just more sensitive, but it it allows you to tune into who you are. And you can, I think, imagine things very well. Yeah, your imagination is going to be on great form. Um, I mean, it's it's been on great form for some time, but I think with the moon moving into Cancer, your imagination is given a boost and your your sense of colour and the way colours balance and blend is going to be very good. So if you want to do anything of an artistic nature or painting a picture, uh, writing a poem, I think um, now is going to be a great time to, great time to do it. And... You can get inspiration from many different things. Yeah, sure, you can get get inspiration from your own imagination, but you can also get inspiration from some of the people around you. You know, Mercury is making a trine to Uranus, and Mercury is, you know, it's ruler of your your opposite sign. It's ruler of Virgo, so Mercury has plays a role in in your social life mercury you know mercury represents the other person so if mercury is trying uranus you it's logical that some of your some of the some of the people close to you have ideas maybe they may be crazy ideas but they're still interesting ideas and they may do things that you weren't expecting so that's another possibility i mean that could be bad if if, if there are if people do 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 things that you not only weren't expecting that you don't really approve of that uh, shake up your routine but maybe that's something you need so you might try very hard to do things on your own but you can't do things on your own at the moment you have to you do have to consider the overall environment and everything all all the people and living beings in it and how they all interlock with each other 
but uh, you know overall I think you're going to understand it all and you know you are a Pisces you're able to flow go with the flow you're at one with the ocean and you're at one with the ocean of humanity and I think that will serve you well today and those are my forecasts for the 12 signs and I now want to look at today from the perspective of the I Ching. So I asked the question, what is Tuesday going to be like for those watching the I Ching section of this video? And the first hexagram I got was hexagram number 59, which is dispersion. So dispersion represents the floods represents rain, represents storm. And it's a hexagram that does come up quite a lot for some reason, it seems, when I do these I Ching readings. And it, on the surface, seems rather difficult, doesn't it? You know, everything gets turned upside down. Uh, and of course, in Europe, we've, we've had these floods, uh, these kind of overwhelming floods. I've seen videos of people in Poland and the Czech Republic and Slovakia clearing up flood damage. And so, yeah, it seems distressing. But dispersion is about clearing out the old. And it's about perhaps putting everything in the washing machine. So everything has to be cleaned, removed, swept clean. And so that might be how we can see dispersion though it is kind of a little bit worrying when it's actually happening, when it's actually going on. Uh, it's, it puts us uh, under a lot of pressure and we might feel that we are losing everything. Now, the third line moves here. And with the third line moving, normally the third line in, in a, in a, hex, in a I, Ching, I Ching reading, in a hexagram, is not particularly fortunate. But... This third line is about the best approach. And it seems to be that we may feel that we are confronted by something that is difficult. It's not easy to do. And the advice here is not to get too caught up in our own ego. And we need to kind of forget about ourselves and ask ourselves why we're doing it. And we're not doing it for ourselves. We're doing it for the wider society, wider community, Stop worrying about whether or not we ourselves can do it. Just do it because it has to be done. And if we adopt that selfless approach, then the I Ching is suggesting that we can actually achieve what we're trying to achieve. And it's not even about achievement. Achievement is, it has too many connotations of selfishness. We focus on, some, on a goal which is for the common good, the collective good. It's not about ourselves. And... It's not about whether or not we can do it. And it, in that way, by aligning ourselves to the universe, we are able to accomplish whatever we're trying to accomplish. But just provided we keep in mind why we are doing it. Now, we've got third line moving. That means the hexagram does shift and it moves to a different hexagram, which is hexagram 57, which is the gentle so the gentle is um, is more uh, relaxed, I suppose. It's about the wind, and the wind just blows things away uh, because of many of the sort of the the traumas and the struggles that we had with the previous hexagram fifty nine dispersion. It, it, gentle blows it away, and it also kind of uncovers things. It blows away. I don't know, the garbage, and, and we start to see the truth of the matter. And so it's like after the storm, and we've done our work, and actually, after all, we're on the right course. So I would see it as sort of chaos moving to stability. But we've also got to be honest, because the gentle is revealing to us what the truth of the matter actually is, and we just have to be honest about it. And... Uh, it's also about perhaps what we're doing being sort of thrown into the winds. You know, it's not about just ourselves. It's about something much, much wider from who we are and our, and our 
ego and its yeah its selfish concerns so uh, let's now focus on mercury trine uranus so today there is a trine between mercury and uranus and that's uh, something i'm going to now going to look at so mercury trine uranus so mercury is a planet of communication it's also about the way we communicate and so mercury trine uranus is perhaps about communicating in quite a compelling way we're, we're getting people's attention uh, and uh, people don't ignore us and we can say things which are perhaps dramatic so that is one way of looking at it now it is a trine with uranus it's, it's a trine it's not like a square or an opposition or a conjunction it's not quite so dynamic and there's not so much anguish not so much pressure and so perhaps it's just easy something easily happens easy communication and it in terms of events this might mean also that things happen quickly and easily and we shouldn't be fooled into thinking that mercury trine uranus in terms of events is necessarily a good aspect because mercury trine uranus can coincide with quite difficult events even quite disastrous and tragic events now is that because mercury trine uranus is about the event itself or is it because it's about the news flow and as we will see when I look at some events taking place with Mercury trine Uranus, they get the news. And so maybe it's not that Mercury trine Uranus is causing a bad event, perhaps, but it's just more about how, how news media pick up on it. And even, even in times when there wasn't a news media, media as we know it, for example, in Tudor England or in Imperial Rome, uh, then people get the news and the news can have a, a very dramatic impact. So let's uh, just look at a couple of people who have or had Mercury trine Uranus in their charts. And one person who had Mercury trine Uranus um, in his chart was um, Jerry Springer. And now Jerry Springer he i think he's dead now isn't he but jerry springer used to be a really big deal i mean he i think he was mayor of some city in ohio was it cincinnati um but so he had a sort of political side to him but he was also he had um he had a chat show and he was known for his larger than life personality and his sense of humor and being a comedian and and everything else and so Jerry Springer had Mercury at one degree Aquarius and Uranus at four degrees Aquarius and so if you know about Jerry Springer I would have said Jerry Springer does fit one's idea about what Mercury trine Uranus can be about so Mercury trine Uranus though it's not just about the spoken word it can be about the written word and someone who is well known or was well known for the written word was playwright Joe Orton and Joe Orton uh, he wrote farces uh, West End farces he was a very I think a very effective playwright very good playwright he was very funny and he had Mercury in uh, 20 Sagittarius trine Uranus at 19 Aries so Mercury in Sagittarius can be a bit risky risque uh, pushing the boundaries that's certainly something he did his farces you often had those themes about sexuality and uh, even things like sort of incest and he was attacking uh, some of the um, sort of the sort of ic traditional icons of society and being disrespectful and that was very much his his trademark and at the same time he wrote a diary and you can buy his diary and his diary mercury trine uranus so you can imagine mercury and sagittarius trine uranus he didn't leave anything to the imagination he wrote a very frank diary about his activities and the uh the the issue here with with his um with his diaries was that you know he 
he was gay and he, he was in a re relationship with a man called uh, Kenneth Halliwell and uh, he was highly promiscuous and he would uh, have these encounters in public lavatories and he would write his, for example, and he would write his encounters down in this diary and Kenneth Halliwell found this diary and Kenneth Halliwell was a bit depressed at the, at the time. He was jealous of Joe Orton's success and um, and then he killed uh, he killed Joe Orton and it was a murder-suicide. So in this case, Mercury trine Uranus um, is um, uh, killed him. And Mercury trine Uranus is also, I suppose you could say it's something of a trickster, likes to have, you know, likes to do things which um, are, um, are just, uh, suppose he finds them funny, Mercury trine Uranus. And his most famous exploit because he lived in Islington, this part of London called Islington, he would go into the Islington Library. Him and Kenneth Cowell, Halliwell, they would go into Islington Library. They would take out, a, they would steal a book, or at least they would sort of borrow a book without signing it out, I think. They would take the book, they would cut the cover up, um, and they would, with incredible care, change, would put the pictures on, um, change the pictures on the cover, some of the pictures they would make them lewd or inappropriate or they would just mess around with the covers and they would deface it, these books, in a very artistic kind of way. And then they would simply replace, put, put the book back in the library. And uh, as a result of this, uh, you know, he, he went to prison. And, and so you can see perhaps with Mercury trying Uranus, um, you can see the... Um, the sense of humour, perhaps, and his particular kind of humour. And so I think that Joe Orton is a perfect example of someone who has Mercury, had Mercury or trine Uranus, and in a sense used it very well, I suppose, at least in terms of his writing. The books he defaced from Islington Library are now um, in themselves works of art. I think you can, go, you can still go and see them. They're on display. So um, he's got, gained a certain amount of immortality because, because of that. And on a less pleasant note, uh, Mercury trine Uranus can be a rabble rouser. It can just say things which are offensive. It can try to stir things up. And Nazi Julius, Julius Stryker, who was editor of this sort of proper Nazi propaganda newspaper Der Sturmer he had Mercury trine Uranus there's his Mercury at three Aquarius and Uranus at two uh, two Libra and so he would make anti-semitic speeches he would be write anti-semitic articles in his newspaper and he was a rabble rouser and he just couldn't help himself and the Nuremberg trials he kept he kept on with his polemic Arguably, it was his polemic that helped um, lead led to his death because I don't think he wasn't. By the time of the Second World War, he was pretty much um, out of the picture. I think he was not considered to be of any great value by the Nazis. He he had the lowest IQ of all the Nazis. He only had an IQ of 106, according to the test done at the time of the Nuremberg trials. And if he had just shut up and perhaps been a little little bit little bit more conciliatory. Um, at the Nuremberg trials, he might not have been hanged, and I think there is there is a view that his hanging was not um, that he shouldn't have been hanged, even though he was an awful person. And so, perhaps like Joe Orton, his Mercury trine Uranus contributed to, contributed to his to his to his death. Now, Mercury trine Uranus at its highest can represent genius and. Uh, physicist uh, Stephen Hawking had Mercury trine Uranus. So Stephen Hawking had his Mercury at 28 Capricorn and Uranus is at 26 Taurus. So you could say with a trine that is a kind of a connection to the cosmos. He didn't have to try too hard. The information was just there. Of course, he was an atheist. He would disagree with that. But that is one way in which Mercury trine Uranus could work. Now, there may be a more problematic manifestation of Mercury trine Uranus here because, of course, he did suffer from motor neurone disease. And 
the neurons you could associate perhaps that with Mercury and Mercury trine Uranus. In fact, it's a grand trine, Mercury trine Neptune and sort of Mercury on the Uranus-Neptune midpoint. So if Mercury is a nervous system and the neurons, maybe Mercury trine Uranus, we can perhaps see two types of symbolism, his genius, but perhaps also the motor neuron disease, which um, he managed to get. <laughs> I mean, he lived until his 70s, which is kind of incredible with that kind of disease, which I think normally that disease kills people in a few years. But uh, I'm not saying Mercury trine Uranus, you can always associate it with, Mercury, with motor neuron disease. But in his case, there is a possible association. And someone very much in the news at the moment is uh, Tim Waltz. Tim Waltz is Kamala Harris's vice president running mate. And he's known for his humor and his ability to communicate and his ability to uh, to make effective speeches and his his quick fire repartee. You know, what did some you know, when. When he said, when he didn't, he said, well, if they want to build a 25 foot border wall talking about the southern border, then he'll he'll have a factory selling 30 foot ladders. You know, that's perhaps his sense of humor. Uh, but he's quick on his feet and he has Mercury in Taurus, Trine, Uranus in Virgo. So whatever you think of him, he seems to be a person who is effectively using his Mercury trine Uranus. Now, looking at some events, remember Mercury trine Uranus is about the news and newsworthy events. So, Charles and Diana's marriage, uh, July 29th, 1981, Mercury was trine Uranus in the completely in the public attention, public the public public eye. The whole world was watching this this wedding. It was a re it was a truly global event, and so perhaps Mercury trine Uranus, Mercury there was Mercury at twenty three, Cancer trine Uranus at twenty six, Scorpio. It was a very public event, and I suppose you could also say that Charles and Diana's divorce was fairly public, and this is when the divorce came through, and at the time the divorce was announced, Mercury was at. Mercury was at one Libra, Uranus was at one Aquarius. So it's it's almost as if a marriage was chiming to the Mercury Uranus cycle. So they married on a Mercury Uranus, Charles and Diana married on a Mercury Uranus trine, and they divorced on a Mercury Uranus trine. Another marriage was Henry VIII's private marriage to uh to Anne Berlin because he had divorced Catherine of Aragon and then he had a private marriage of the public marriage marriage was a bit later I I, I think this program it converts it to Gregor, Gr Gregorian calendar I have got the date right even if it doesn't seem to be right um, but Mercury was at 12 Scorpio trine Uranus at 12 13 um, 12 13 Cancer so Mercury is quite secretive there. I don't know what time it took place, obviously, but Mercury trine Uranus, it was a big event. Him divorcing and marrying Anne Boleyn, and she had such a, in her short life, she had such a big impact on the on on England. So maybe you can associate Mercury trine Uranus with, with marriages or perhaps important marriages, and uh, another historical event of importance was the suicide of the Emperor Nero. So he committed suicide, this is, I think it's been converted to the Gregorian calendar, in June 68. AD 68 was, I think, the year of the four emperors, where you had Nero, and you had Galba, and you had Otho, and then you had Vespasian. And so Nero's suicide was important for a number of reasons. It was the final end of what do they call it? The you know Julius Caesar's dynasty and what they call it the Julio Flavian dynasty or whatever. So that was the end of the dynasty of Julius Caesar, the absolute final end. And so Mercury trine Uranus represents perhaps that ending. And it's also the news. It is big news. The emperor has committed suicide, and then. Rome goes into chaos. It was already in chaos. He didn't just commit suicide for the sake of it. He committed suicide because things were falling apart. And so perhaps it's an indication that Mercury trine Uranus is not 
always a fortunate event, but it can actually be quite a momentous event. And we do have to be careful that, you know, with Mercury trine Uranus, yeah, things can be in the news, but things can get blown up. Uranus is a planet of explosions. And the Greenpeace's ship, the Rainbow Warrior, so Rainbow Warrior was blown up by the French in 1985 in Auckland Harbour. So this Greenpeace boat had been monitoring French nuclear tests and was actually, I think, trying to disrupt French nuclear tests by moving into the, moving into the, the exclusion zone. And the French blew it up. They sent some people in to New Zealand. They blew it up and a photographer on board was killed. And Mercury was at uh, where's Mer 14 Leo and Uranus was at 14 Sagittarius. So exact trine, Mercury trine Uranus, an explosion, uh, a newsworthy explosion. It's, it's in the public eye. Everyone immediately knew it was the French. And I think the agents that the French sent were arrested pretty quickly afterwards. And so don't think that Mercury trine Uranus is just about fun things. And it, in, and we can see even a greater tragedy here in, in the fact that uh, the killing of the school children at, in Sandy Hook in 2012, when um, uh, all those pr uh, elementary school children in Connecticut were killed, happened with Mercury trine Uranus. Now, there was Mercury at four degrees Sagittarius, Uranus at four degrees Aries. Now, does that mean that the Mercury trine Uranus was influencing Adam Lanza? That he snapped because of Mercury trine Uranus? Or is it just indicating that about the news, this was an absolute, complete global event. It wasn't just an American event. And it was a school shooting that had, that far and away uh, got the most attention. I don't think it did much to gun laws or anything, but still, Mercury trine Uranus, it was an event which just got the new, got the attention of, of everyone. And Mercury trine Uranus can also be linked to plane crashes, plane accidents. Um, Sanjay Gandhi, the uh, son of Indira Gandhi, who was the heir apparent um, to her position, I won't say her throne, but uh, she was the prime minister. Um, perhaps the heir apparent in terms of the Nehru dynasty. Uh, but he, I think he he was into flying. I think he died in a glider accident or was it a, plane, a, a propeller plane? I don't know. But he, he died in a plane accident on June the 23rd, 1980 at 8.10 a.m. Um, and there was uh, Mercury was, Mercury, where's Mercury gone? Mercury was at 24 Cancer and Uranus was at 22 Scorpio. So, uh, you think Mercury trine Uranus is always pleasant, and I suppose Mercury trine Uranus is flying, but here it represented an accident. And um, so that sort of fits. Another plane accident, or not a plane accident at all, actually, it was deliberate, is Yevgeny Prigozhin, the head of Wagner, uh, was um, the Wagner group, uh, this sort of Russian mercenary group, supposedly, uh, involved in a siege of Bakhmut, and then Yevgeny had his mutiny. Yevgeny Prigozhin had his mutiny, and uh, Putin wasn't too happy about it. But he did a deal, and he seemed to be treated leniently. But he broke some of the conditions of the deal. He went to places he shouldn't shouldn't have gone to, and his plane was uh, blown out of the sky. Could have been by. Russian government, could have been by the Ukrainians, could have been by Western intelligence, perhaps because they'd let him down, they'd betrayed them, could have been by someone else from Wagner. No one knows who did it. But Mercury was, uh, Mercury at 21, Virg 21 Virgo was close to a trine with Uranus at 23 Taurus. And don't look at that Uranus, it's exactly on the IC when, when, when that plane crash happened. And finally, Mercury trine, trine Uranus is about the news. And the first broadcast of Fox News was, I believe, on October the 7th, 1996. And of course, Mercury trine Uranus, it does fit news, perhaps controversial news, gets people's attention. Everyone has heard of Fox News, even if they don't watch it. And 
there is Mercury at 27 Virgo making a trine to Uranus at zero degrees Aquarius. It's dissociate, but it's still it's still in trine. So that's it. Those are some thoughts on Mercury trine Uranus. It's not as fun necessarily as it sounds, and it can be associated with um, accidents, death and tragedy. That is possible. Um, perhaps... Uh, maybe more easier to deal with in a natal chart but as an event chart i think mercury when we when we do have mercury trine uranus we do have to, we do have to perhaps um watch out anyway uh that's all i'm going to say for today uh thank you very much for watching uh if you enjoyed this video i'd be very grateful if you were to like it and if you're not subscribed i'd be super grateful if you were to subscribe and if you want to buy me a coffee there is a link in the description so Thank you very much for watching again and I will talk to you again tomorrow.